Welcome to the YouTube channel here on NBC Connecticut. This is Face the Facts, and I'm Mike Heideck. Joining us now is Representative Gail Laviel. She's from Wilton, and we're talking about education. She sits on the Education Committee, many other committees, including Appropriation and Transforma Transportation. First and foremost, let's talk about funding, the funding mechanism where state dollars go back to municipalities like the Stanfords, like the Wiltons, like the Greenwich um, uh, areas of Connecticut. People criticize it. They say, look, Areas like Bridgeport and New Haven need more money. They have more poor, lower achieving students than some of the places in Fairfield County do. You respond how? Well, first off, the, the affluent towns are not asking for any more money from ECS. Right. They would, if they had the choice, they would prefer to have their autonomy and not to have to respond to the same mandates that districts that have more improving to do have to respond to. Um, the second thing is that there's inequities in the present formula. Okay. Um, I represent part of the city of Norwalk. Mm -hmm. Norwalk and Stanford have always been shortchanged by the ECS formula mm -hmm. because of where they are located. The, the real estate values weight very heavily in that formula. And there are education concerns in parts of Norwalk and parts of Stanford and well, their challenges. Sure, and not only that, they have a very high uh, uh, level of English language learner uh, second, population. Second, yeah, yeah. They have a very uh, high level of poverty and same population. They're very, they're very similar to Danbury actually. So you think it should be a case-by-case -case basis as opposed to regional the way the formula is figured out? Or, or you, you believe that there well, are... Well, the, it's, the formula is not regional. Okay. But I, I do think that um, you believe, there's a you better believe way Norwalk to weight and Stanford, the formula. Yeah, Norwalk and Stanford suffer because they have high real estate values, but there are also challenges there as, as well. As an example. Got it. Uh, one of the other things that continues to be a major issue here uh, in Connecticut, shocking this week, we're getting hacked. Our schools are getting hacked. The computers are getting hacked, and they're held ransom. Some of our schools are having to pay ransom money to get their computer systems back. Should there be more money funneled to firewalls for, for um, local school districts? We had one school district that had to pay tens of thousands of dollars to get their data back this year. You know, we passed a law a couple of years ago um, that I had a lot to do with on student data privacy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of work went into that. And there, there is, in fact, a state agency that deals with uh, security of data mm -hmm. in Connecticut schools. And uh, I don't know whether it's a question of money or whether it's a shift of priorities. Is it just follow not through? Sure. Was, there, was there not a follow through, do you think, in the situation? Or well, we need to spend the money in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can't have the schools getting hacked. There's tons of private data in there. Um, yeah, per school performance, uh, reasons for absences. They didn't even have something as simple as their health. lessons plans to get through the first day. They had to figure out, they postponed school to try to make sure that they could yeah. uh, get everything done. So that's, that's a scary proposition. Certainly. Um, as you look forward, uh, we have a new education commissioner now. Mm -hmm. um, Governor Lamont just brought him in, brought him in. Let's talk about the achievement gap. I've been hearing about the achievement gap since I was in school. It does not seem like it's gotten a lot better in the past decades. Why do you think that is? I don't think it has either. And I, ha I have kind of a, an off the beaten path theory about it. Okay. Um, certainly there's all the things we always discuss that there are economic differences and cultural differences mm -hmm. and so on. But I think that's almost a simplistic way of looking at it. Um, I lived out of the country for many years mm -hmm. and something has always struck me about education in this country. What, what child comes home from school and says, I am so popular and I'm considered so cool because I got good grades? Mm. We don't have that in our culture and it's something that we have to work on. Um, Encourage success as a good thing. Well, yes. Culturally. Yes. And, the, the, and I, you know, uh, there, there are many things to say about that. But the other, the, the other thing is that just the focus on academics, and I think this is true regardless of the economic situation in the district. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the colleges are partly at fault. College admission standards are now based not only on your grades, but also on your sports and on your extracurriculars right. and on whether you saved the world before you were 16. Yeah. And uh, that, that has resulted in our having all of these students in Connecticut going to our community colleges and our state universities who have a need for remedi remediation mm -hmm. in reading and basic mathematics, the level is 70% 70, 70 of them need remediation. Something's wrong there. We're graduating people who don't have the schools even just to move ahead in their education, let alone 
get a job in, in today's world. Are they falling through the cracks? Other people say, look, we're teaching way too much to the test. These kids aren't worldly enough. They can't problem solve. They know how to do rote memorization. Where, where do we find the solution in the middle of all that? Well, the tests probably have something to do with it. Yeah. I, I agree with you that there's a little too much emphasis on that. And that the test ought to, once you've gained some competency in these things, you should just be able to take a test and be good enough at reading and expressing yourself right. and uh, understanding and math to get through it. But that's not the way they're looking at it. Um, but we also need a, uh, we do need a measure of accountability for districts that are receiving a lot of money. What are they doing with it? But I, I do think kids are being allowed to move ahead without a real concern for what it is they've actually learned Not an and easy valued. problem for any of us to fix. Representative Gail Laviel, we appreciate your Great time. Great to be on Milton. with you. And if you like more of the Face the Facts YouTube videos, just click on another one right over there. This is Face the Facts with NBC Connecticut.